Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And for the final time, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. It is right. It's my final episode hosting this show. Some of you were probably expecting it to come out on Wednesday. But Boss Man Tate allowed me to do my favorite shows on Friday, given this is my last day, so I figured why not do the NBA on Friday. And I think this has been, without a doubt, my favorite show to host. Football is always fun, and so is sports. But I think that social media has allowed, and like social media, like the era, the social media era and the NBA being so, I'd say, welcoming to it and all that, it's kind of allowed everyone who has a podcast talking about the NBA to have a little bit more fun with it. It's not as formal or anything like that, but you're able to speak your mind a little bit more. So I guess I got NBA Twitter to thank for that. Either way, though, let me tell you what I'm talking about today. I mean, it's business as usual. More Jimmy Butler stuff. I mean, it, it gets better and better. Allows me to have a little quick laugh and all. So we'll be talking about him, Tom Thibodeau. And maybe the fact that I don't think Thibodeau can really coach without former Bulls players. We'll talk about that. Second segment, we're going to get into Kyrie Irving. He's been doing interviews, been talking to media, and is basically from what he's been talking about, has been, he's not leaving Boston. Again, everyone can change their mind, but I'll give my thoughts on that. Third segment, we'll talk about the Rockets. We'll get into the Lakers. Uh, Melo seems to be more accepting of a bench role. He'll never outright say it, but he's been talking about about uh, helping out the team, doing whatever what's best for the team. That would be a first, but we'll see what ends up happening. And as far as the fourth segment goes, I'll talk about whatever else is going on in the NBA. Tristan Thompson made some comments. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll save him for that fourth segment, but, but good old Tristan Thompson, man. Oh yeah, you got Mark Keith Morris, Marcus Morris's brother, um, also making some comments. Those Washington Wizards, you look up the definition of irrational confidence on the internet. Definition is Washington Wizards. It's hilarious. So we'll do that for today's show. It's going to be a fun one. I'm going to get some thoughts off, and I'll enjoy it. Like I said. So moving on to the first segment. Good old Jimmy Butler. I feel like we've been talking about this for the last month. Has been an ongoing fluid story. I think last week we talked about him wanting to go to the Clippers. This week, we talk about Trouble in Paradise out in Minnesota now. Trouble in Paradise being, it seems good old Tom Thibodeau, Tibbs as we like to call him, does not want to trade Jimmy Butler. But there is one man who wants, who's ready to get rid of Butler and who wants Butler out as soon as possible. That is the owner. And I feel the owner has a bit more say in matters such as these than Tom Thibodeau, who is the GM and also head coach. Why? Because he's the one who writes the checks. And over the past week, the Timberwolves gave Carl Anthony Towns a long-term deal. And I feel like that showed us that the Timberwolves picked Carl Anthony Towns to be their franchise player. And rightfully so. I mean, it's not a hard decision to pick between Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, is it? It's not. Jimmy Butler's a great player. Not saying he isn't. I think he's a top 20 player. But there's a catch. 
Jimmy Butler, as much as he wants to and as much as he thinks he can, will never be able to be the guy on a team. He just won't. And I think his time with the Bill or Bulls, excuse me, almost said the Bills, would never disrespect the Bulls like that. But his time with the Bulls and the Timberwolves, I think has shown that he just can't be the guy. Let's not forget, drama has followed Jimmy Butler around. And you think, oh, well, it's not Jimmy's fault. We'll look in Chicago, okay? Maybe it wasn't Jimmy's fault. Now, all of a sudden, after a year, there's problems within the Timberwolves locker room. Who's been the constant there? Jimmy Butler. And I think, like I said, Jimmy Butler is a great player. I really like Jimmy Butler as far as a basketball player. Don't know him as far as being a person. But he is, dare I say, a new version of Carmelo Anthony. A very good player in the NBA. But a guy you shouldn't build your team around. Why? Because you won't win that way. And I'm not sure anyone has the heart to tell him, but Jimmy Butler's going to be at number two for the rest of his career. And any team that makes him a number one won't get to where they want to be. And, I mean, there's all kinds of things to unpack here. I mean, he's even got a new favorite team that he wants to go to. And that is the Miami Heat. I always thought Miami was a dark horse even before the list of teams that he wanted to go to was announced. I think I have audio of that on here, so I'm not lying. But, um, yeah, I always thought Miami made a lot of sense. I mean, you look at it. They have young guys there, but it seems the young guys are kind of like the young guys in Boston, meaning they got talent, and all they want to do is play basketball and win games there. You got a top five coach in Eric Spolstra. I mean, I think personally a top three coach. You got your fair share of vets. You got Dwayne Wade there who can round up the young guys and make sure everyone's on the same page. I mean, it's the perfect spot for Jimmy Butler to go to, I feel, as far as what he wants, at least what I think he wants. And from what I've picked up over the years. Now, if Jimmy Butler were to go to Miami, does that make them a finals contender? Of course it doesn't. No. I just told you Jimmy Butler can never be the number one. And any team that makes him the number one won't get to where they want to be. Jimmy Butler's a nice second option. But it'll never be a number one. And even then, I mean, you look at it. Does he make this team better than Boston? No. Does he make them better than Toronto? No. Does he make them better with Philly? It might be a little worse than Philly. Not as talented, but I'd say instead of losing in, what, five games? Or do they get swept? I think they lost in five. Instead of losing in five, you can lose in six or seven. That's 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 an improvement. And I'm not trying to hit on the heat by any means, but it's the truth. At least it's my opinion, I should say. I mean, the truth makes it seem like it's fact. And eventually it probably will be fact. But we'll have to wait till then. But like I said, I mean, Spolstra will get the most out of this team, but the most out of this team will probably be a second round exit, maybe a first, depending on who they get matched up with. I mean, you look at it. Sure, let's make the Heat the fourth best team in the East. You got to play Boston or Toronto in the second round. I know you guys are saying, oh, Toronto stinks in the playoffs. Well, they got rid of a guy who never really performed in the playoffs and added a guy who's a top five player in the NBA, went healthy, and is a very good playoff performer. Also has a finals MVP under his belt. He goes by the name of Kawhi Leonard. And I feel so bad for Kawhi. Kawhi's always been a quiet player. Never really said much. Never really showed any emotion. And that's Toronto Raptors media day. When he said, oh, I'm a fun guy. But I can't really tell you much about myself. You got to ask more questions. I mean, I don't even know where you're at. And then he laughs. I think that was a genuine laugh. But all you kids out there went and made fun of of him for it on social media. I mean, and I'm saying poor Kawhi because maybe he was finally starting to branch out a bit, show some emotion. And then he gets absolutely clowned for it. These players got feelings too, you guys. They really do. But no, that video was hilarious of him laughing. But like I said, I mean, yeah, I don't think they get past Toronto this year. And I think Toronto might be a pro- will be a problem in the East. 
And honestly, if you look at it, Miami's pretty much got any trade package that Minnesota could love. You want Josh Richardson? They got him. Good young player. Justice Winslow, good young player. You want an established vet? Go ahead and take on Hassan Whiteside. Maybe you could move Towns to the four. I'm not sure maybe if he could fill in the Anthony Davis role there. But even then, Anthony Davis is going to be a five this season, so that kind of doesn't work. I mean, they got picks. They got young talent. They got established vets. Maybe you want to go on Dragic. I know the Suns have wanted to be a third team in a trade like this, given you take on a Jeff Teague, Minnesota takes on a Je- uh, Goran Dragic. The Suns need a point guard. Even the Kings have been a team regarded as a possible third team. They need a first-round pick and could take on cap space. So we'll see what ends up happening. And before we finish up this segment, Tom Thibodeau. I got a problem with Tom Thibodeau. Can Tom, like, Tom Thibodeau is really reluctant to trade Jimmy Butler. Can this guy not trade without former players from the, or can, can he not coach without former players from the Bulls? Let it go. Does he not realize he's digging a hole as far as his job security? Does he not realize he's lighting the fire under his seat? He's put himself on the hot seat. I mean, it's ridiculous. Trade Jimmy Butler. It's not that hard. When the owner wants Jimmy Butler gone, I'm sorry, you got to trade him. You're not a Brad Stevens. Even That's a boring example because Brad Stevens wouldn't even get involved in these kind of things. He just says, Danny, do whatever you got to do. I'll make do with whatever I got. Okay? You're not a coach who's been established enough to have that kind of say. He's not been that great of a coach, if we're being real here. So if he wants to continue digging his own hole, his own grave, as they like to put it in the phrase, go ahead. But he's doing himself a real problem here. So we'll see what ends up happening, but if they're smart, they trade Jimmy Butler before the season starts. And if they don't, I don't see Jimmy Butler coming back to this team. The bridge has already been burned there. So we'll wrap it up there. Next segment, I'll be talking about the Celtics and Kyrie Irving. So stay tuned, and I will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between 4 and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Spent that first segment talking about Jimmy Butler, the trade talk and all of that great stuff. I mean, went on a tiny little rant about Tom Thibodeau. I feel like that's been a theme over the last three weeks. It's been basically going on a little five-minute 